been a professional musician since the age of 15 and then yeah. like in uh, I'm 42 now so it's like been yeah. doing it for a while. <laughs> you used to work in a record shop as well didn't you? That's right, um, in record shop, mini, turn, turn mini cab office, turn band rehearsal room you know so, so it all kind of pays for itself <laughs> you know always been like trying to keep my own music business going by, by creating opportunities that would allow me to move on to the next step. Dexter Wansel wrote that and I was a big fan. And people said to me, why do you make, do you make covers on your records? They're always there, don't you worry about a thing. At the end of the day, I'm just a big music fan. And I get to meet these people. I get to go to their houses. It's like, you know, for some people, it's standing outside and collecting autographs. Now, I actually go into their houses and I get to meet them and everything and chat with them. And Stevie Wonder calls my house and, tell, and says, Bluey, what do you think of this yeah. tune, you know? So it's like, for me, it's like a big high, you know, massive trip. Incognito is right at the forefront of the soul scene. Do you find it hard to keep that consistency? I think it's easy because it's coming from, for me, because it's coming from a national musical point. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen like, just this place here, my home, Britain, as, as, my, um, as my, ba my boundary, my barrier. You know, it's, um, it's an eclectic music, and therefore it suits like a, a, a uni it's quite a universal sound, you know? So I travel a lot and, uh, to Japan, where we have a lot of success, a lot of fans in America and, and, and in Europe. So I think what keeps it going is the fact that there is like maybe not just one big market for it, but a lot of small markets everywhere. For it. Do you like the travelling aspect of it? Definitely. In, in a way, a lot of people think that um, I, 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 it's a by-product uh, by of what I do, where if they really knew me, this is what I set out to do in the first place. This is the, what's more important to me than music, mm. the actual journey making, the travelling. Your album, No Time Like the Future, it's taken you two years to do. Yeah. And your first one only took six weeks, it's yeah, a bit right. of a difference. <laughs> but, you know, in those two years, you don't just, you don't just make music. Um, and uh, it's the adventures that led to the album you know, within those two years that are quite incredible for me, because every album is only um, like a, an entry in a diary, yeah. after all. You know, so that's, that's all it is, it's like a captain's log of the events that's gone on previous. So if you listen to the previous album, Beneath the Surface, it's down tempo, it's, it's, it's mellow, because that's where I was. I was going through divorce, you know, I was going through mm. per personal things in my life, and it has to reflect. What sort of guests have you used on the album? Mesa and Jocelyn came, from, came in from America, and uh, my friends Irikiri from Cuba, mm. you know, were in town doing, uh, doing a stint at Ronnie Scott's and got him in the studio and playing. Just people that came through the doors and also people that were um, interesting in, in using for quite a while and watching the growth of their careers and suddenly they're in the band. There's always some of the old some, and some of the new. My son's on this record. He, he worked right across the album. He's on like five or six tracks. Does each track tell a story of the time that you wrote it? I think so. Um, there's different ways of making music. On one album we had one of our uh, big tunes with, it, with, it, with the audience. It's a, it's a song called Still a Friend of Mine. And uh, I remember I woke up one morning had the tune in my head and was strumming it on, on, on the bus to the ferry and um, by the time we got on the ferry I'd arranged it and the whole band was sitting around me and we performed it on the ferry over to France and we performed, <laughs> performed it in the show later that night. Yeah. So when it comes from some an experience that you've already made, it's easy, it's like writing a diary and you know, and that's what I do is I write my diary every day and then I look at it and I just draw my songs from it. What do you feel about people like Masters at Work and MJ Cole remixing your music? Well, for me, um, I've really been into DJ culture for quite a while, you know. Yeah. I've grown up with DJs, Charles Peterson now at Talking Loud, um, was my record label, and um, also from my clubbing days, yeah. I used to actually just save up enough money and just get on a plane and go to New York at weekends and go and see Morales Mix at Paradise Garage, you know, because like, yeah. it was a place to kind of go and check music. So it's a good thing for me to kind of like be in with Morales and with uh, Masters at Work and people of that ilk because what they do is they take you the music that you've made to uh, an audience that normally would not be yours anyway. Yeah. So it's a good thing. I love it. The track you've got at the moment is Nights Over Egypt and that's from your album, No Time Like the Future. What's the next one you're releasing? Uh, I think it's uh, It Ain't Easy. Track yeah. featuring Jocelyn Brown, and uh, I'm hoping that's going to be the one. But you know, yeah. I'm leaving it to the powers that be. When, when's that out? Well, hopefully it'll be out in the next few months. Yeah. But um, concentrating on um, uh, promoting the band live at the moment, getting the band together, and going on a world tour.